couple minutes after five, I've got everybody good? Yeah, thank you. All right, I'd like to call the special call meeting of the Milton City Council for Monday, March 20th, 2020 to order. The city strongly recommends that you review tonight's agenda carefully, and if you wish to speak on any item on the agenda, please bring your comment cards to the clerk as soon as possible. Well, the Milton rules allow a speaker to turn in their comment card up until the clerk calls the agenda item. Once the agenda item is called, no more comment cards can be accepted. The comment cards are the yellow cards in the back, and the city clerk is here to my right, Sudi. Sudi, if you will please call roll and make general announcements. Good evening, Mayor and Council. I'll be happy to call roll for the March 20th, 2020 special called meeting. I would like to remind those in attendance to please silence all cell phones at this time. Those attending the meeting who would like to make a public comment, you are required to complete a public comment card prior to speaking on the item. Your comment card must be presented to the city clerk prior to the agenda item being called. All speakers, please identify yourself by name, address, and organization before beginning your comment. If you are rep representing an organization, an affidavit is required stating you have the authority to speak on behalf of that organization. Please review tonight's agenda. And if you would like to make a comment, please bring your comment card to me now. Demonstration of any sort within the chamber is prohibited. Please refrain from any applause, cheering, booing, outbursts, or dialogue with any person speaking. Anyone in violation will be asked to leave. As I call roll this evening, please confirm your attendance. Mayor Joe Lockwood. Here. Councilmember Peyton Jamison. Here. Councilmember Laura Bentley. Here. Councilmember Carol Cookerly. Here. Councilmember Joe Longoria. Here. Councilmember Rick Morick. Here. Councilmember Paul Moore is calling in from Memphis, Tennessee. And Councilmember Moore, are you there? I am. Can you hear me? Yes. Thank you. Would everyone please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, before we uh, to approve the agenda, I want to, we actually, we discussed this a few minutes ago, that we've got some emails, I think Sudi said 12, which typically, um, you know, if, if the people aren't here, they'd have to have an affidavit. But um, since we're up to about 18 now, 18. So in. it's up to the council. If you guys want to have Sudi read those into the record, um, as we'd have to make an adjustment. We'd need to right? make a motion uh, to to basically suspend our rules with respect to the normal requirement that they have to be in attendance. If we're going to read, uh, that'd be up to the council. You could either have the clerk read the comments or provide simply a summary of the comments, either in a favor or opposition to whatever the agenda item is. Okay. And I, I'm going to assume most of those um, those emails were probably copied to the council, correct? Would that be? I would say three quarters of them. Three quarters. Were. Maybe uh, maybe a summary of them, the, the name and the position and whatnot. And uh, is council all right with that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Laura, you got it. Okay. So, uh, um, so we'll need to make a motion on that before the make agenda. Motion, Mr. Mayor, just make a motion for the clerk to provide a summary of the emails to the council as part of the record for tonight's meeting. And, and also make sure that the council gets a copy of those. Yeah. Okay. Does somebody want to make that motion? Mayor, I'd like to make a motion that the city clerk read the uh, emails, sum, summarize the emails, and provide a copy to the record. Second. Okay. I have a motion and a second as read from Councilmember Bentley, second from Councilmember Morick. All in favor, please say aye. 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 That's, uni all right, that's unanimous, included, including Paul. Um, and before we get to the agenda, too, I want to also, and, and I apologize, this uh, seems to have stirred up some attention here in the last hour or two, and we've all gotten a lot of comments, and I'm sure we've got folks that want to speak public comment, but what I'd like to do before is um, to actually have a discussion and let Ken explain this ordinance before we get public comment, because there may be some information in there, and then we'll listen to public comment, and then we'll discuss, discuss the item and, uh, and, and make a decision, if that's okay with you guys. All right, so, uh, so if you'll read the next item, which is approval of the meeting agenda. Next item is approval of the meeting agenda. Okay, to have a motion. So moved. 
Okay, we have a second. second. I have a motion from Council Member Mora with a second from Council Member Bentley for approval on the uh, agenda. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. That's unanimous. Okay, uh, we do have some public comment. So, public comment is a time for citizens to share information with the mayor and city council and to provide input and opinions on any matter that is not scheduled for its own public hearing during today's meeting. Each citizen who chooses to participate in public comment must complete a comment card and submit it to the city clerk prior to the agenda item being called. Please remember this is not a time to engage the mayor or members of the city council in conversation. When your name is called, please come forward and speak into the microphone stating your name and address for the record and you will have five minutes for remarks. The city encourages you right now to review the agenda and if you wish to speak, bring your comment card again, the yellow cards up to the city clerk. Um, all right, so we will uh, move on to new business. City, if you'll, if you will sound the item, and uh, again, we'll just dis we'll we'll discuss it first, or have Ken go over it, and then we'll we'll ask for public comment. Council consideration and possible approval of an emergency ordinance declaring and proclaiming a state of local emergency due to COVID-19, triggering those unilateral emergency powers that are vested in the mayor pursuant to Section 1825 of the City Code, granting the mayor additional emergency powers to suspend certain ordinances and rules, providing guidance on the operation of the City Council during the period of the emergency ordinance, plus any extensions and otherwise superseding the emergency ordinance adopted by the Council on March 16, 2020, Agenda item number 20089, Mr. Ken Gerard. Ken, if you would, yeah, I'd like to ask, uh, Ken authored this um, ordinance, and uh, if you'd explain why you were recommended to bring it forward to us. Mr. Mayor, members of the council, thank you very much. So I guess it goes without saying that we are in an unprecedented time right now. Um, my law office represents a lot of different governments, and every one of them is attempting to deal with COVID-19 uh, and all of the fallout of this and attempting to do what they can to preserve the public health, safety, and welfare, and Milton is no different in that regard. Um, and so that has kind of, kind of been the focus of my week this week is the various um, uh, actions by local governments attempting to do this. In fact, as referenced by the clerk when she was reading the agenda item, this council, too, in fact, took action by way of an emergency ordinance on Monday. And, and you did that by way of Section 3.18 of the Milton Charter, which allows for the adoption of emergency ordinances that have 30-day duration. I want, to, I want to compartmentalize the various acts upon which you are acting uh, to emphasize the limitations of those powers. So first of all, I want to deal with your charter. The charter allows the city council to adopt emergency ordinances that have a 30-day duration, and these are obviously in emergency circumstances, which I think we undisputably have, uh, and they are of limited duration intended to provide exceptional relief uh, in exceptional <laughs> circumstances. Milton did that on Monday, and to the extent that you do that again today, this ordinance that you have in front of you would in fact supersede uh, that ordinance and would reset the clock on the 30 days. Now, if you will recall, the ordinance that we adopted on Monday was basically aimed at the operation of the government, public hearings, what sort of items that you would take up for consideration during this 30-day period. And one of the driving forces behind that ordinance was, in fact, to make the citizens of Milton understand that for at least a 30-day period, the actions of the city of Milton are not going to be based on long-range planning and the sorts of things that generate public assemblies because citizens want to come out, but was going to be basically either response to COVID-19 or uh, typical uh, acquisitions or contracts that have to occur to keep the government running. So that was sort of the reason we went to the links to do that. Um, I will tell you that the world has changed even between Monday and today. This uh, crisis continues to evolve, uh, and candidly, a lot of governments are struggling with sort of the nimbleness, the flexibility uh, to make the sort of interim short-term decision-making that they need to provide relief. Candidly, for instance, as by way of an example, one of the industries right now that we are seeing that is very affected uh, is the hospitality and restaurant industry. You know, whenever you have a crisis where the stopgap interim measure is don't assemble or gather, 
uh, one of the byproducts of that is your restaurant industry is getting is getting really hurt right now. And so a lot of governments uh, in the metro area have been adopting uh, codes or ordinances that may delegate some power to one of their officials to be able to make some stopgap interim measures to provide relief. For instance, to perhaps suspend regulations involving package sale licenses. In other words, to allow restaurants the ability, for instance, that have on-premise consumption licenses to also be able to engage in limited package sales. So in other words, when somebody drops by to pick up their meal, they may not be able to get an alcoholic beverage as well. Is it is it perfect and complete relief? No, but it's an attempt to mitigate the financial impact of this on our business communities. That's just an example. Uh, I've got another government even today that adopted a declaration not forbidding public assemblies, but strongly recommending against public assemblies, wanting to, at the one hand, recognize the civil liberties that we enjoy under the Constitution, while on the other hand, uh, using the full power of the government to educate the citizens to act in their own self-interest. You get the idea. And, the, and that was a byproduct of the giving of that, ele that particular elected official some unilateral powers to act, as opposed to having to assemble the entire board to make that. Everybody kind of follow, see what I'm doing there? All right. So in addition to the Milton Charter giving you this authority to adopt these 30-day ordinances, um, the Milton Code for over a decade since Milton's been in existence at section 1825 has vested in the city uh, mayor the unilateral, hear me on this, the unilateral power to declare an emergency. In other words, the council did not have to assemble for the mayor to declare an emergency of his own, but he has chosen to do that. And upon that unilateral declaration of emergency, it enumerates eight specific powers that the mayor unilaterally would have had. Those powers have actually been put into this emergency ordinance for you to take a look at. Hear me when I tell you, the mayor could have done this without the council, but the council is actually, for purposes of transparency and accountability, this has been put into this emergency ordinance. This has been in the code for a long time. This is nothing new. This is nothing that has been written by staff or me. This has been in the code since I believe Milton has been in existence, and these powers have been put into this emergency ordinance this evening and candidly it may be that as we walk through the various powers in the ordinance it may be that the council the will of the council is is we don't want to use all of them they're in the code whether you exercise them or not but it may be that you don't want them as part of this ordinance but i want the council to hear that because i believe there may have been this notion that these have all been assembled like ad hoc and these powers have been put together this has been in the city of milton ordinance since 2006. All right. And I even might state, too, Ken, per our conversation, some of these are actually limiting what is already in the code. Some of the, as we get into the rest right. of the ordinance. So, right. So, so they're so, actually taking away a little bit of powers that were already in the code. Well, the, the, the bottom line is, 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 that, is that these are not going to be unilaterally undertaken. The, the mayor does need to make the proclamation, which is actually in the ordinance, that it's the mayor proclaiming. But it's not just the mayor proclaiming there's an emergency. The city of Milton proclaimed there was an emergency on Monday of this week. So that, that has already been done. Of course, so has the state of Georgia through Governor Kemp, and so has the President of the United States declared there is a national emergency. So I think we all understand the sort of common denominator behind all of this. Having said all that, a couple of things to also remember. Any ordinance, should you adopt it this evening, only lasts for 30 days. That's number one. And to the extent that it's supposed to last for longer than 30 days, it would have to be uh, extended. In addition, the city council obviously has the right to terminate it earlier than that. In addition, any power exercised by the mayor, should the, should the mayor actually have unilateral powers at the end of this proceeding this evening, can be undone immediately by an act of the city council. Okay, so I want the, everybody to understand that um, as well. The last thing I want to point out as we begin to walk through, and if you would, I hope you have a copy of this in front of you or have it available on your tablet, the actual ordinance, but I'd like you to go to page two, which is where the enumerated powers that are again in the city of Milton code that would be sort of activated should the council adopt this ordinance. There are eight of them. 
to enforce all rules, laws, and regulations relating to emergency management. Uh, I know one that has caused some concern is to seize, take for temporary use, condemn property for the protection of the public. I understand, council members, that any local ordinance or enactment of this kind uh, is going to be bound and subject to Georgia general law as well as the Georgia Constitution and the United States Constitution. There is no such thing as a unilateral right by any individual elected official to take anything. It's subject to tremendous constitutional and statutory protections. So please don't believe this would give anybody the right by fiat to just go out and point at a piece of property and say, I own it. That's not the way the law works or the Georgia Constitution works. And that's even assuming if the mayor and the council want this to be one of the enumerated powers, which you may actually decide not to. And could I just, just to put it in more clear language, for, especially for those people at home, um, the, the powers as listed that we're going through right now is one through eight are the ones that already existed within the code. Correct. These are not, this, these are not new powers or anything that's been added to in addition as a result of this proclamation. In fact, the powers that are, that are looking to be sought are actually able to loosen some of our regulations. So some of our businesses that are suffering are able to, are able to do some things that they might not be able to currently do now because of, of regulations. So one through eight that Ken's going over and some of the things that we talked about, you know, declaring a curfew, ordering a business to close, um, the, those are all, that's 1825. So those were basically cut and pasted into this, uh, into the, what, what's before you right now. And I just want to, I think that's important that, that I know you, you get that because of what Ken just said, but I want to make sure the people at home that are watching understand that these are not specific to what we're trying to accomplish. These were powers that were already um, listed in our, our code. Can we ask a question about two now? Or two? Let him, let's, okay. yeah, discuss two, and because that's one that pops out that uh, okay, so my has some heart. Well, point, let's, can, let's let Ken discuss, or Ken, if you want to explain to and then yeah carol's well no i mean I, I i think i had pretty much d done that i mean okay. I, I know what it says <laughs> facially but my only point is is that there is no local enactment that we can undertake that would supersede the georgia constitution or the general laws of the state of georgia nor has anybody from the city of, city of milton expressed or and indicated an interest otherwise um so i'm um, and as to what uh, the city manager indicated this was simply part of the enumerated powers that were in the uh, city code for years okay. the only thing again and then i'll let care of yeah i just you know like number two when someone reads that it looks like it may have been put in you know like uh, we're going to come in and seize their property or whatever so i don't know if you have any explanation of and again why it was obviously it was in our code but why we would need that in here now well, there could be situations where, to the extent that the mayor wanted to initiate a condemnation action, uh, that could occur. But again, condemnation actions are subject to statutory protocols, court intervention, and the payment of just and adequate compensation. So uh, I, again, this was simply the laundry list of things in your code for the city of Milton to consider and then use almost like a cafeteria plan to kick out as you didn't want those in the ordinance. Okay. Uh, but I'm not at liberty to, 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 sure. uh, to lessen the extent of the ordinance that already exists in law. Okay. Carol? Okay, so I think you pretty much asked the Sorry. question. No, that's fine. <laughs> I understand that these were in there. That was my understanding. My um, that they are all contingent upon a higher power. Exactly. And the fact that this is only a thirty-day event, it, got, it makes no sense that it's still in there. So, what would be <laughs> the point of having it in there going forward? Would we be able to undo? Is it embedded in the charter, or is it a different working document? What I would recommend is if the city council has no interest in that being a power that is part of the emergency ordinance, just declare that when you adopt it and take that one out. Take any of them out. Yeah. Um, but again, this, you know, most governments are bringing to bear all of their various codes in responding to emergencies. The city of Milton has acted in a very responsible fashion to this. I have seen other governments that are shutting down business, trying to ban public assemblies, shutting down restaurants. The city of Milton has done none of that. Um, and so I think you all are acting in a very modest, sober, sort of very uh, reasonable way. Um, but on the other hand, when I'm preparing an ordinance that sets forth powers under emergency opportunities, I'm going to put everything in your code that speaks to that and let the council as the policymakers choose which uh, uh, and what they want out of that. So that's what we did. Um, another one that, that has raised some concern, uh, number three. 
um, to uh, sell in, give, distribute, and Steve and I were talking about that and uh, kind of, Ken, can you explain, you know, explain why we might want that in there or not? Well, the, the typical reason is, is because in the states of emergency, where I have seen that language before in similar sort of ordinances, is because of simply the lack of, of necessities. And sometimes governments are better or in a situation better to stockpile and, ha and amass uh, quantities, whether it's food, I've seen it in bottled water, in the bottled water context, et cetera. We're not talking about giving away staplers. We're talking about giving away things that people need to live. Uh, and that would give the, the city the power to do that. Uh, one of the fundamental powers of a city government or any government is to protect and preserve life to the extent you have the ability to do it. I don't know where this thing ends, nor does anybody else. And it is a power that will likely never be ex exercised, but it may be better to have it and not need it than to need it and not, not have it. So that, that doesn't provide the power to seize someone's property and give it to somebody else. It's the ability for the city to be able to distribute water, medication, things along those lines. Absolutely, right? which is why the, it, it indicates there's a strict accounting requirement because it is, in fact, the giving of city property, not, not private property. And, and that was a clarification I wanted because Steve and I were looking at it's like, well, I could see where someone would look at it. It's like, I'm going to go over, you know, the, the city's going to go over to so-and-so and take their 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 stockpile of something and distribute well, it. Right, right. But, but in, in interpreting any ordinance or, or police power enactment of the city of Milton or any other government in Georgia, people need to cross-reference it against the Constitution. I mean, this notion of being able to just to go out and take private property without compensation being paid, that's foreign to the Georgia Constitution. Um, does anybody on, on some of these others, are there some, uh, let's see, Joe? Just for the first eight items that are in section two. Yes. Mm -hmm. Our vote is more or less inconsequential because these are already in the city's set of ordinances. The, and so just for section two, we're just affirming that this is the case. Because if we were to either not vote or vote no against this ordinance, we still have these eight items in Milton Law. Th that's right, but those eight items do anticipate a more mayoral proclamation, and the mayoral proclamation is actually built into this in this resolution. In other words, the, the proclamation, which could have been done unilaterally by the mayor without having to have a public meeting to do it, has actually been placed into this ordinance for purposes of transparency. So. If the city, if the city in fact wants to take out some of these enumerated powers and not make them part of the ordinance, they wouldn't be part of the ordinance. Could the mayor unilaterally exercise them if he wanted to? Yes, until the, mayor, the, the Milton Code is changed, which you all may want to change this as a byproduct of tonight, but uh, those would still be there. Still, however, subject to all of the constitutional safeguards that I am a firm believer of and will not allow the city of Milton to act in derogation of. I'm very conservative when it comes to that. So. Anybody else on any of these first eight? Um, I think can, we, we, we just got... Paul? Is that Paul? Sorry. Paul, I think a lot of the heartburn that I've been hearing from the community really has to do with two and three. And I think with Ken's clarification just now that two is independent of three. It's not like we're going to see somebody's property and then be distributing it for the public good. I think that clarification was really important this evening, and hopefully that will arrest a lot of the concerns from the community. Um so we just I'll put that one to rest unless, can you feel like it's necessary to comment on that? Um, but I would also point out in the um, declaration of the, of the mayor's ability to uh, declare um, the operating and closing of any business. Can you comment on that, Ken, to I think there's a lot of people's concern about having their rights taken away to be an independent business owner and make their own decisions on that. Right. So... Two other powers, um, and I'm going to I'm going to put them together on this: the, the the limited or general curfew, and to order the closing of any business. Um, those are significant encroachments into civil liberties. I just I'm going to say it: they are. Um, could there be such a compelling public necessity 
uh, that uh, a governmental entity bound by the United States and Georgia Constitution has to take the power to, to do those very things? Yes, I could see a situation where that exists. But um, that would be something that would need to be uh, of a significant, significant public health and safety concern before I would be comfortable signing off on that. Um, I have seen other jurisdictions already engaging in this activity. I'm not going to point out jurisdictions. Everybody can read the news, same as me. Um, but I have seen governments that are already doing that. I have seen prohibitions on certain forms of public assembly. I have seen prohibitions on restaurants closing. Uh, I am, how about this? I am challenged by that act activity. Um, I do think it is a power that could be properly exercised, and I'm not going to comment on whether it's been properly exercised yet. So, Ken, why, why does the mayor need to have an ability to make decisions in an emergency to begin with? Right. Typ typically, there's, there's two reasons for that, and they're related, flexibility and, and timing. Um, th this situation, I've been practicing law for 25 years um, in, in local government, uh, is, is probably a once in, of, a, of a career situation for me. I, I, I was telling the city manager before we spoke today, you know, I have lectured on this um, and, and emergency uh, ordinances uh, and laws, um, but, but not actually seen it done. And so it is different. It's, it's easy to lecture about something quite a bit different to actually watch it unfold. And, and the, the thing about this pandemic that is unique, um, and I'm not saying that a fire or a natural disaster or a flooding event is any less, but I am suggesting the unfolding, um, the rapid pace of the factual development is a challenge. And I do think that, the, that one thing that governments aren't, and this is on purpose, is terribly nimble. Uh, they, they tend to be a little more regimented. And so having a little bit of flexibility that allows a uh, responsible elected official to be able to make some calls is extremely helpful in addressing a situation like this. And the beauty of this situation is, is there is a check and balance if, in fact, the mayor was to make a decision that the rest of the council found that they were not in agreement with or found to not be acceptable, they would have the immediate authority to, to override that decision. Uh, candidly, I know how decision-making works in Milton. I know that it would be vetted thoroughly by staff and me, um, and so I'm not the least bit concerned about that. But, of course, the final arbiter of what is appropriate would be the council. Right. And the reason I ask the question is principally because I think that Two things could be wrong and could be generating the concern that the public is expressing on this. The first one I would say is that there are various emergencies where um, interruption of uh, common services, infrastructure capability is part of the emergency itself. If, if the country were to go to war, if there was some kind of an invasion, something like that, where literally people were um, impacted and our infrastructure was impacted, that'd be one thing. The second, it, I don't think that this is necessarily that situation. Now, I don't want to try to speculate. I don't want to try to diminish. I don't want to try to, you know, pretend like something isn't happening that actually is. But we are seeing a transformation in um, things that happen every day. I mean, I work for a company that you know, employs over 75,000 people in the U.S. And we've got 50,000 of them right now that are working from home. And we've had to do that. And we've had to ensure that we can still do our business. Now, not all businesses are ready for that step, but I'm trying hard to understand why our current level of technology and capability as a city and as council members wouldn't enable us to support the mayor in any kind of decision that needed to be made as quickly as we needed to make it. It probably could. A lot of governments are grappling with that right now as well. So we still are subject to the Open Meetings Act. 
right. the Open Meetings Act does allow for meetings with less than 24 hours advance notice um, upon the declaration of an emergency, which, by the way, this ordinance does. It declares an Open Meetings Act emergency. What the law says is, is you're basically given two options. You can either meet like you're doing now, which is a physical quorum uh, in place, or you do have the right to, to engage in what's called a teleconference, which is what Councilmember Moore is doing, but it anticipates it would be all of you. In other words, you would not be physically here. The key is, though, if you do that, the public has to have the right to simultaneously see and hear everything you're doing in real time. Councilmember Longoria, a lot of governments are struggling with that uh, just because <clears throat> it anticipates uh, multiple computers, multiple monitors, multiple streaming all together into a common place and then streaming all of that in real time to a link to your web page. Now, for some of you in private industry, that may not be terribly sophisticated, but there's a lot of governments in Georgia that just have never even dealt with that situation before and are kind of getting up to speed on it. <clears throat> I will tell you that Everybody that I know, the governments I work in, are looking at it, and all of them are sort of have dusted off their IT and are going as hard as they can go to figure that out. Because given we don't know how long this is going to last, the next sort of new frontier in this is how do you pull off a cyber public hearing? That's going to be the next step. How do you do that? And if you do that, do you disenfranchise those that don't have the in internet infrastructure or what about maybe certain uh, individuals that just aren't comfortable with technology? Do they not get a seat at the table? You, you see the, I mean, this is the sort of thing that the folks in my profession are struggling with. But to your point, the nimbleness, uh, could it be accomplished? Yes. Could it be accomplished today? I don't know. And if you were to adopt this, it's going to expire in 30 days anyway. You know, let me yeah, make a statement, too, or, or a clarification. You know, yesterday when Steve called me, um, you know, and I called counsel um, through Ken's direction. And, and the reason for this ordinance, again, there's, like you're saying, and, and, and again, I, you know, I didn't come up with this idea or, or get with Steve or Steve didn't mean, hey, you know, let's give the mayor more powers, less powers or whatever. The intention or the intent from what I understand was with the rapidly changing things that are going on right now, the need for a little bit of nimbleness, nimble, nimbleness um, for example, you know, to your point, we can, can telecommute or teleconference, we can do this or that, but let's say something happens tomorrow at 11 a.m. and the governor comes down with a mandate of the state or, or from, from Washington or whatever, or an emergency happens and I need to make, the city needs to make a quick decision. If we go advertise a public meeting, this and that, and by the time you do that, it may be too late. So that was the, the intent um, that, you know, we talked about and the reason for this, this ordinance. Again, there's nothing saying, number one, from the council, I certainly, I don't want the decisions all on my shoulder. I want the council to, to uh, be involved. So it's, it could be as simple as a, as a phone call. I would certainly call you guys, talk about, hey, we've got this situation right this second. We need to make a decision in an hour or whatever. But then it could, it would also, it could be ratified later by the council. And, and again, as to your, your point, it's only a 30 day uh, a window or whatever we could make decisions and the council could change them. So again, I'm just explaining that to the council and the public. This is not something where we're trying to have some powers that we don't have and do. This is if something happens tomorrow, Saturday or Sunday or whatever, and we need to make a quick decision and we don't have time to advertise 24 hours and, and have, a, have a meeting or whatever. But it, it may be a temporary, you know, a temporary decision and then later we adjust or, or council can adjust. But that's, you know, that was the reason. And, let me, let, me, let me explain. I mean, we were discussed. discussed. Th th this was more, more my idea than anybody else's because every government I deal with is trying to struggle with this right now. So let me give you two real-world examples of where I've seen this manifested. The first one was uh, in a jurisdiction I work in, the call was uh, convenience centers. Right now, individuals still have to deposit their trash. They were coming in, but because we charged fees, there was a lot of contact. And so the folks at the convenience centers were calling in the employees of that jurisdiction saying, hey, can we suspend collecting the fees for maybe 30 days so we're not having to have that, that contact with the citizens? Okay, the, the head officer in that, in that entity was able to make that call by way of a declaration under this grant of power. It was a simple thing to suspend the collection of convenience fees. 
Another example, in another jurisdiction I work in, they do random drug testing. Random drug testing, which is done in most jurisdictions. But the, the folks in that jurisdiction said, hey, can we suspend this? Because if we're doing drug testing, that means we are taking away vital facilities that are needed to do coronavirus drug testing. So can we suspend that even though it's mandatory under our code? You see the idea? I mean, that's, it's a very utilitarian thing. This is not some sort of declaration of, 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 of something bigger than this. It's very day-to-day -day sort of activities uh, that are needed. And I, can and I think, uh, excuse me, Steve, and, you know, and that was the intent, in fact, when I called council to see if, if we could, could set up this meeting, and that was all it was. Now, I know when, you know, then you did the ordinance, and, you know, it looks like, hey, we're wanting to take property or do this, and that, that is not the intent at all. So that's the main thing I want the public to know, and obviously the council is, this is only in an instance where a quick decision needs to be made, that a reasonable decision, you guys can weigh in, and we can confirm later, and you have the rights that, you know, let's say I made a decision you didn't agree with, the next week you can call a special called meeting and you can reverse it. Is that correct? Yes. So. And I could give you real-world examples of what we're dealing with right now. Um, we Excise taxes are due today. Um, that is something that I would be recommending that we put off for a little while, and let, it, it primarily impacts our, our restaurants. Um, and these are the things that just are emerging right now. Uh, maybe excise taxes, we, we could hold off for a while, interest-free, penalty-free, and, and collect them on, on the other side of this. Um, occupational taxes are coming due very shortly. These are the same businesses that are going to be affected by these, by, by what is going on in the, in the economy right now. I, I, wouldn't, I can't do that as a city manager. Um, if that's something that we could be able to do on, and be more nimble and be able to do it on a, on a real-time basis, um, we, I think we could, be, we could serve our, our, especially our business community, but also our citizens just a little bit more. That, that's really what's behind this. Okay. Yeah, I, again, especially with all the, you know, outcry from the public, this is, you know, we just assume we didn't do this. And, but, uh, you know, it's as well, far as... misunderstand. Well, misunderstand, yeah. but, you know, as far as it's only intended if there's a reasonable call to, to implement something quicker that can, you know, the, the health and safety of our, of our citizens. So, Laura? So, that, I mean, obviously we have an Open Meeting Act emergency situation. We do not have the time to um, convene and, you know, what if we can't get a quorum? And so I'm, I'm comfortable with taking this measure so that we can protect the health, safety, and welfare of our community I mean, look at the, the culture and the environment of when we were here on Monday and how much it's changed. And going into this weekend, um, I'm very uneasy with seven of us having to convene or make a decision. So I'm 100% um, behind doing this. And it's unfortunate that, you know, we haven't looked at this part of our charter for a while. And, um, and I think that's what happened today, um, you know, I think that we, this community should have faith in this council up here and our legal council and our city staff that are here. So that's... And I will say, thoughts. members of the council, if, if in reviewing the ordinance, whether the power exists or not, if the council wants to strike some of the, the laundry list of powers, that is certainly appropriate. This is not a fixed document, and it can be adjusted. And if y'all want to do that, that's perfect. I mean, I'll make one suggestion. You know, item number, section two, number two. I'm fine if we strike that just because it kind of, it, it just leads you to think that, you know. It's not going to stand up in court anyway. It's not going to so. yeah. stand up in court. It's not going to change and our, so three is our the code same. anyway. Two and so. three. So. Because three is contingent on two, I would think. So why not two and three? And three, three is not contingent on two. Three is, in my respectful opinion, mm -hmm. three is talking about the distribution oh, of city-owned oh, oh. of city city owned, city owned. Yeah, I I'm think we sorry. just need to clarify that. I think some people, and I know at first read yeah, of it, it I looks like, it you know, property. we're going to go over to say, yeah. old blind dog sorry, and take my, their bottle of water and distribute to somebody else. And that's, that's not the intent there. Okay, so strike two. Well, perfect. I'm good. Say it again. Say it again, Paul. That was the clarification um, I had asked for that Ken provided earlier. The two is independent of three. Okay. Um, is there? Anything? I have a question. Or? So there's no scenario that we can think of 
Um, Mr. Krokoff, that the, the number two, um, I mean, I can't think of anything. It, so is there any danger in striking it? I, I'm not the attorney here, but I don't see any danger in striking it. It still exists in 18-25 yeah. okay. regardless. Um, but right. I, I you understand. Would, this is no different from the, con, from the few condemnations that we've had to do over the years um, acquiring right away. There's no, that's exactly what this is. I can't imagine, you know, I, I assume that this exists in the event that we had to take over a large building for an emergency hospital, hospital or something like that. You know, this is an ordinance, that, correct me if I'm wrong, this was most likely acquired from Fulton County when, when we became a city. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was anticipating some type of large-scale mass casualty event where we would have to, uh, you know, pick up a, a huge box store and turn it into a, 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 a medical unit. Okay. Yeah, there's absolutely, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll yeah, use the, the, Joe, I'm sorry to interrupt. I would remind everybody, too, the, the preamble to the Section 1 states clearly that all the balance of the things listed here are contingent upon them being related to the specific coronavirus uh, pandemic. Absolutely. So it's not like we can take a random act that's not associated to the virus. That's, that's a part of the Section 1 preamble for this. That, yeah, and that, that's a good point. This is all just to this specific virus right now and, and all everything was changing by the hour or whatnot. As you guys all know me and I think the same thing, you guys, nobody in the city wants to, you know, take somebody's property or, or condemn anything. So it's not our intent. Rick? And I guess listening to Steve and some of the examples that you brought up that are really practical things that would help businesses, that would help, I guess what I'd suggest after we hear public comment or go through this Maybe some of these other things we don't need to include in this if they don't preclude you from doing the very things that you need to, like, you know, number seven, gasoline sales or closing, closing of businesses. There may be a reason to do that. I don't know if we want to just do that at the, you know, a quick check from the, I would think that would be something we could probably have, have more discussion before we'd actually enact something like that that's that broad and sweeping as far as what it impacts. You know, can we go over number seven? Because I know in reading that at first, you know, and even it talks about firearms, but, you know, it's, if you read it close, it's a precluding, precluding firearms. firearms. And also, I don't, uh, to prohibit or regulate the, the possession, sale, or use of explosives, you know, Ken, what would the basis of that be? It's, it's hard. World. It's hard to know. Yeah. It's hard to know. It could have been in a situation of extreme drought. It, it could have been a situation like that where there is a concern over uh, just the combustible component of it. Um, but I mean, we could probably think of, of situations um, all day long where there could be a, a concern related to that. But again, it was just it's in the ordinance and it's part of your emergency management response. And the gasoline, you know, gasoline or other flammable liquids. Um, you know, what could be a situation? You know, if we had a gas shortage and, you know, you need the odd even days kind of deal like well, that. Well, I mean, there's, that, there's the prohibition, the local but there's level. also the regulation of sale. And so, I mean, you know, candidly, folks, a lot of the focus of emergency management ordinances at the local level is on prices, gouging and hoarding. Uh, that is very common. Um, so that's, that's, that's probably the focus. And isn't there federal laws against that right now that, that we're seeing actually enacted where people try to hoard and then sell at a marked up price. Well, I think we're seeing the federal there, There's a variety of things, states. but the federal laws that are evolving with respect to this are unfolding daily. Mm -hmm. uh, there are federal laws coming down the pike. Sure. Well, I, oh, sorry. I, I look at number, number six when it talks about closing of public, like city facilities, we've already taken an action on that. So I don't see any, any problem with allowing that to to stay in there because we we've sort of already gone that direction. So, Ken, I'm trying to understand the statement you made earlier. Is there an activation component to this? There is. Okay. A proclamation by the mayor. So, so, and we have to take that. You do not. Okay. So, if we don't take that, what does that mean? If you don't take it, the mayor could take it still, but he may choose not to. Uh, the reason that it was it was designed this way was because it was candidly a limitation on that power. It's a 30-day check on it. So I'm trying not to be oversimplistic or net this out. What we're voting on 
is do we want to remove any of the current powers that the mayor has in an emergency, and do we want to recognize that fact? That's right. Just for the next 30 days? That's correct. Okay. Anybody else? Um, do you guys have anything else before we have public comment? And then we can... The only other thing I would, I would offer up to you is that, candidly, the, what I think is the most important part of this ordinance we've not even discussed yet. So um, the, 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 the most important part is... Go ahead. Be that way. Is, well, no. I mean, and this is my guidance to you all, is number one, eight, is to perform functions and duties to take action to promote the safety and security protection and well-being of the inhabitants. Uh, that is obviously a huge power, subject, of course, to your check. Uh, and again, that's all to aid our citizens, to aid our citizens. And then if you'll turn the page to page three of six, uh, section four, to suspend ordinances, resolutions, orders, rules, or regulations regarding the conduct of city business. So that's actually sort of one of the things that generated this entire undertaking was within the context, once again, of alcohol, was the notion that typically if a on-premise consumption vendor uh, wants to sell package alcohol, they would have to come in and go through an elongated process of public hearings to get a new license. This would allow, at least for a 30-day period, for that to be suspended by the mayor. That's sort of the dance that brung us, was, was that. Everything else sort of wrapped around it. And some of you were on a conference call with Senator Alberts today and some of the other cities, and that's, you know, that's a good example of something that we might want to do temporarily. Um, so. Right. So. And I think other cities are doing that, correct? Yeah. So every, yeah. I mean, the, the list servers that I'm on are lit up with respect to other jurisdictions that are doing that. So yes, that is exactly Trying to right. Provide a lifeline to it's some a, of these. it's a lifeline. Yeah, I yes. think it's important to clarify, especially to our citizens, that the goal of the council and the city and our staff is is to help our citizens. I mean, keep them safe, obviously, but also to help you know through this. Right. We're we're all in it together. So. We're not looking at these things to, you know, take rights away or, uh, so. Okay. Any? One final Carol? quick thought. When, at the conclusion of tonight, um, Mr. Manager, can you or someone on your staff draft what the actual mm -hmm. essence of, and the purpose of this and Let's not wait for the minutes to go back to the people where this has become like its own viral thing and so highly inaccurate. I, Can we get something back to folks because they're getting upset about non-factual information? And I think I would add something. You know, <clears throat> all this seemed to be fueled with within the last 30, 45 minutes. But usually I like to answer all emails, but they were coming well, in way way They probably don't so have the luxury of being able to, to so, watch. So, so we had... Um, actually mentioned to, to Greg or communications to possibly, you know, to work on getting the facts out so that they can post that so everybody can see that too. If he, he is, he's at the ready waiting for the meeting, for us to get through the meeting um, to be able to post just that. Okay. okay. So if there's not any questions right now, then let's have public comment and then we'll let City read the uh, emails as we said and, and then we can discuss any more. Um, all right, Sudi, if you want to call the first speaker, please. First speaker is Ms. Hope Winograd. Good. good. And if you don't mind, just protocol, just state your name and address for the record. Um, and I'll say it is Dr. Hope Winograd, and I live at 305 Galecrest Drive in Milton. Um, and... As I receive this, and I understand what you're saying from a legal aspect, um, obviously when the city ordinance was originally written, no one took into this a medical emergency. And that's where I'm coming from is as a veterinarian by profession, having not practiced in a lot of years, and that's the other reason I brought Hibiclins. So that, to remind everybody that Hibiclins, which is also antiviral, um, is better than just regular soap. But so none of this takes into consideration and the wording is really not pretty when it comes to it being medical related. And having had other instances associated with legal things by saying, oh, well, I'm sitting, you know, you put in a curfew 
till 8 p.m. because you think that's actually safe, but others for mental health have to get out of the house and they can't get out of the house and they're out there at 8.45 at night, they're violating a curfew, which is actually illegal. And so then you have other citizens who will start picking up the phone and calling 911 and saying, you know, they're out there violating curfew. That's not a good one. Then um, where it says to order the closing of any businesses, and again, I'm on section two here, um, and it's like, well, you need a specific medical reason before you choose to close a business there. And you guys were talking about not happy with number three, and I'm not happy with four, five, six. <laughs> and then four, um, that was the curfew, closing the businesses, and the same thing with the street. You know, it's like, fine, you've closed the city hall, but closing a street or other public place. And I was using the example before of saying, I'm sitting on, is someone sitting on the park bench and you've closed all the city parks, but you're sitting on a bench right there at the park at Deerfield and um, Webb Road and saying, you know, someone comes along and saying, well, that's illegal. So yes, I realize you're saying it's only for 30 days, but it's still a legal violation within those 30 days. So if there's any way to reword it so that I understand what you're saying, that it's like it's there, but at the same time, it's not medically necessary. And I guess that's the problem is that this nothing was written for medical emergency as opposed to riots or things like that. Um, so I think that's, and if anybody wants to ask or for an explanation on understanding viral, I'll be more than happy to do that off topic. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Mr. Mayor, just a quick point with respect to that. The doctor is not wrong. It is interesting as we've been pulling out a lot of these emergency management ordinances and plans, not in Milton's, but everywhere, even the state, some of the state models. The viral, it, it's the, they're not a perfect fit for this. I will tell you, it, it almost seems like it's more natural disaster from the, almost a meteorological standpoint or a, a, a hurricane or a tornado or a flooding event. It's, 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 it's close, but it's not there really perfectly. Just an interesting sure. Um, City, if you please call the next speaker. Karen, did you want to speak? Okay, our next speaker is Karen Rising. Hi. Um, thank you for taking my call earlier today, sir. Oh, sure. um, my name's Karen Rising. I live at 725 Kilgarren Court, um, just down the street. M my comment's pretty, pretty straightforward. I, I've heard a lot of you talk about how... Um, the public's reaction is a misunderstanding or that we've not correctly interpreted the facts. It seems to me that a lot of the issues and the concerns that, that we as a community have with the language as it's currently written could be resolved if the language was just quantified a bit better and qualified. And that's that's my only comment. Thank you. All right, well, thank you. And can it's okay to I'll make a general comment. We don't go back and forth with public comment. But just so the public knows, you know, when we read this, obviously it's done legalese and, and, and from a legal standpoint, we have some of the same concerns too. So we discussed and we might have had the same uh, interpretation until we clarified it too. So, you know, the public's not wrong at all in their uh, interpretation of it. So, Sudi, if you'll please call the next. Next speaker is Derek Manville. Hi, I'm Derek Manville, 13215 Owens Way, just right up the street. I um, appreciate you guys doing this out in the public. It, it is at least nice for us to be able to sit here and be able to come and have comments with you. But um, I'll start with my ask. The ask is that you vote no on this. 
if you won't vote no on all of it, then at least remove two, three, five, and seven from the from the statutes or from this this request or whatever it is. Um, I also think that you should remove those in the future from the full city code because of the broad-reaching nature of them. Um, so now I'll go into maybe defending that. I, I I couldn't help but listen to what I would characterize as the weakness in the argument for this. Um, number one is the questionable constitutionality that was admitted here. Um, and I would like to also point out that the specific statutes enumerated and given to the governor of Georgia um, the way it's written today is actually more broad than what he has. Um, there are specific omissions in what you've written that, that give you more power than the, than the governor. The second thing would be um, the, the idea that other cities do this. And the examples given convenience center operations, random drug testing, I don't see how that fits. I, uh, I'm, I'm a little bit of a loss there. Um, I also, the nimbleness. This was posted four hours ago, and yet here we sit. And in addition to that, the idea that um, the mayor can do this unilaterally anyway, nimbleness doesn't really seem to apply in my mind. Um, city managers' examples, things like suspending excise taxes, I don't see that written anywhere in here. And so if that's, if that's a reason, let's get it in there. Um, the last thing I'd say, or, or a couple more things, um, I find the argument of having faith to be the argument of non-representative democracies, and I don't, I, I, I can't, I can't agree with that. Like I have faith in you guys to do what you're doing, and actually, I think you're doing a great job. But these things go too far. The the last thing I'd say, my specific challenge is the unilateral nature. That's one, and then number two. Seizing and taking other people's property, I don't, I, I can't get in, I can't, I can't be a part of that. Um, selling, lending, or giving property, you specifically stated that that's the city's property, although it's not written that way. Um, number five, uh, closing a business, I find that that impacts people, impacts business owners, and impacts the workers that work for the businesses, and I don't, I'm not comfortable with city council doing that. And the last thing I'd say is the regulation and prohibiting of gasoline and things like that. That's just too far. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Yeah. City, if you'd please call the next speaker. And that's all we have in the chambers. Okay. So I've got the emails. To... Okay. And uh, I believe our, um, we discussed was you could summarize, you would summarize the emails, obviously make sure council, most of them were forwarded to council anyways beforehand, but State the name yeah. and address, summarize, and and uh, go through them, their position. So I have received 13 emails. All of the email comments were in opposition. I'm going to give a summation of the common concerns of the emails, of the 13 emails. Um, please do not support proposed amendments. Huge overreach by government. Concerned about tonight's meeting specifically, in sections 2.2, 2.3, 2.6, and 2.8. They're broadly written. They leave us anxious and concerned. Uh, broad language on seizing property. Unchecked powers with no due process. Unconstitutional language. Is there a way to tighten them up so we know the intent behind them? So that was the common summation. The names on the emails and addresses, Jeffrey Miller and Margaret Miller at 852 North Brookshade Parkway, Milton. Rose Prestiani, 105 Providence Oaks Point, Milton. Stephanie Costenton, Michael Moschel, Barbara and Robert Halbert, Drew and Susan Kimball, Brian Bush at 1425 Birmingham Road, Leanne Wheeler, Andrea Bartels, Tamara De Georges, 1425 Birmingham Road, Deanna Teal, Ginger Lightburn at 3423 Piedmont Road, Northeast Atlanta, Georgia, Judy Burns, Birds at 1165 Bream Road, Milton, Georgia. And that's all I have. Okay. Thank you um, for those that email, but also especially use it, you um, folks that showed up tonight here um, with your, your comments and just being here. 
Is there, I don't know, Steve, Ken, do you have any? And then council, questions, thoughts? Thought, I, I, I'll actually let Joe, if you have a question. Yeah, I'm sorry. No. <clears throat> and in the future, it's probably better for us to separate the activation from the adjustments component of this because we're, we have to vote on them as a collection or, or, or together instead of as two separate things because we already have something in place that provides these powers to the mayor and all we're doing is trying to adjust how they happen but we still have to have this activation component the only the only way to have done that i mean would have been for the mayor to have simply issued the unilateral proclamation in which case we wouldn't be having this debate right now at all he'd simply just have them couldn't monday have served as the original activation could have. I mean, the, 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 the ordinance on Monday was of much more limited scope, though. I mean, this truly was designed, candidly, the enumerated powers of one through eight was not really the primary yeah. focus of this. My point is, and for the citizens that are listening in, if we vote for this, this motion, we're actually restricting what's already there. Correct. Okay. If we vote against it, we're saying, no, we want to give more power in this situation. Not necessarily, because the mayor would still have to no. issue the unilateral proclamation, which he has not done. Okay. He, he, he has not done that. My point is, if, if what we're thinking of is how do we restrict, okay. we should be voting for. I, I would agree. You know, again, I'll thank you. Uh, Sorry, Ken. <laughs> I'll thank Ken, though, for uh, a lot of heat we're taking. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, but again, you know, my understanding, this is more on a decision, a common sense decision that needs to be made quick. The council can certainly come and change that decision. The council will be at least, you know, asked about it, whatever. If it, But if it's something that over the weekend or whatever, that we give some kind of order and we need to to take quick action. That that's the only intent I see. Obviously, these uh, you know one through eight items. Are, you know, I, I don't anticipate or hope we ever see, we ever see that uh, again. That's in our in our code or ordinance already. Um, so I guess the the reality is, if we took them all out of this ordinance, it really wouldn't change anything, would it, Ken? They wouldn't exist until, unless the mayor issues a unilateral proclamation. Okay. So if you take them out tonight, you have every right to do that. And if you don't issue a unilateral proclamation of a unilateral declaration of emergency, the powers won't exist. Okay. okay. Anybody else? Questions, comments? Rick? So if we, if we took this and in Section 2, and I think that's where most of the heartburn is, is in Section 2, the number of things, we could individually remove some of these items if we wanted to as part of this this motion, correct? Yes. Okay, and then essentially if we pass that, then that's what we're conferring upon the emergency powers to the, the mayor, whatever whatever is included. That doesn't preclude coming back and at another time and saying we need to add, if Austin, we, we had to adjust a curfew or whatever, if that wasn't included, we could later come back and amend that. Is of that, course, yes. Okay, and then when I look through this, Section 5, is that pretty much the content of what we approved, Ken, on Monday as That's far correct. as the emergency? The reason that we're redoing it in this one, though, is because this one will supersede Monday. So, and in fact, it'll add just another five days. Because remember, these run in 30 days. They're done. So by superseding it in this one, you give yourself, it'll just, it'll just extend it another five days is all. So it's really a de minimis change. So that's basically, we are, that would just be reapproving it as part of this. Correct. So we start, we start the clock over on the 30 right. days. Right. Really the only, the only new powers are section two and four. And, and candidly, Section 4 was the primary driver, which was the ability to suspend ordinances rules. And again, Section 2 isn't really new. It's 18 dash, but I don't have it in front of me now, out of our ordinance. But I would just have to de declare a proclamation. 
which which we built into this ordinance it is it would serve as that purpose but if the council says you know what we'll adopt the ordinance but strike section two those powers would not exist you'd have section one you'd have section three and four would be the, the emergency ordinance and are you saying steve that the, the majority of what you or what you guys talked about that's really important is section four for the ability for the to mayor to, the yes to be able to uh to be able to affect some of those uh, loosening of regulations on our businesses. Well, it's like I said earlier, really the whole intent with this was to be able to help our citizens and, you know, uh, with, with health and uh, public safety of our citizens, but also with their businesses too. If there's something we can do to help in a temporary or emergency situation, but uh, kind of grew into a much bigger discussion. Yes, it so. did. <laughs> Believe me, I didn't want to spend my Friday night. <laughs> Oh, I'm, I wasn't looking for any powers. <laughs> yeah. um, hey, Ken, you, you did say we could, we could actually extract an item here and there. I think the one in my mind that's caused the most uh, public concern at the moment is 2-2. Two, two. And, and I know that there is concern about others as well, but the seizure of property is the one that's got everybody's attention. But I think that the balance of those things, for all the reasons you have discussed this evening, have uh, profound nature and are for the good of the community. I think there's a lot of misinterpretation of that in the you know in the void that exists without the benefit of uh, Ken's extensive legal counsel on this. I think that uh, as we consider this, we ought to um, um, look at striking two two, but leave the balance in place. That would be my my suggestion. And I'll just add, I actually marked. To, to myself that I thought, you know, that may, may sen make sense and, and uh, uh, to strike um, as well as I certainly want to, as we talked, um, I want to make sure whatever decisions made tonight, <clears throat> Steve, if you could direct communications to get all the facts out so that, you know, to put the public at ease over this and uh, that it's a, a temporary thing and it's not a, a power grab, if, so to speak. So. Absolutely. Um, Carol? What is the transparency element of this? So if the mayor had to take some action and it had to do with the payment of taxes or let's say things got much worse and we didn't want anybody moving around, um, what, what is the transparency element for the public? Typically what I have seen is that there would be a unilateral declaration document issued by the mayor. It is copied on the full council, uh, senior staff, uh, as well as myself, and you know, actually, the city manager and I have not gone over the protocol, but it may very well be that they end up being posted on the web page as well. Can we push it out in a proactive manner? Absolutely, or does that okay. and 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 candidly, most a lot of it. What I am seeing right now is a lot of it is in fact educational narratives, like like as I mentioned in other jurisdictions today, the the, the chair of that government issued a warning, not a ban under an ordinance, but a warning against public gatherings as Governor Kemp has done and as the president has done. We are still seeing individuals sponsoring large weddings, large assemblies, hundreds of people coming to them. We're not shutting them down, but we are trying to tell people that is a horrific idea in this environment. So that's what we're, we're trying to do. We have spring break here in, in Milton, do we? We do now. Um, <laughs> and I have already <laughs> given the direction out to staff to come up with protocols regarding these, these orders. So not only do we, do we know how to deal with it from a staff perspective, how we get it to legal, then how we get it to the mayor, then once that gets done, how that gets disseminated publicly so people are aware of it, and then how we deal with that from a communication standpoint so people understand exactly what that is. So that's uh, Stacey Inglis, in fact, is going to be spearheading that piece of this. And I might just add, too, just for council and public, or, you know, had a conference call earlier with the mayors of the other six North Fulton cities, and we all discussed this, and, and all of us are on the same page that, we're not looking to make decisions in a vacuum on our own. We want our councils to be involved and support. Um, you know, some some of these decisions are some heavy decisions. So we certainly uh, want to, uh, you know, want to want to share that that uh, I won't say burden, but uh, you know, the uh, decision with our council. So um, again, to Ken's point, um, if I did have to make a decision, because a lot of this we may not have to. If I did have to make a decision, obviously you'd be copied on it. And to clarify. Uh, immediately, the council could uh, 
um, you know, counsel could choose to to uh, reverse that decision. Uh, right, of course, so. that's right. Rick? Yeah, my, I guess my only comment in summary, I, under section two, I'm, I'm good with number one and number eight and possibly six, but some of the others, I don't know if we need to take action today, like the closing of business, the general curfew, I think that's part of what's given the, the heartburn. And if we, unless we really think that we can't get back together in the, in the event that we would have to do something like that or be able to pull a meeting. That's just, that's my, I'd my like comment. I'd like to just get Ken Legal and maybe Steve's on that. I'm not, you know, I, I, I'm i not pro closing any business. Stand behind what, what I, well, I stand behind what I said. Number one, I do believe that you have the right to go through under this ordinance and pick and choose out of those eight. Candidly, any of it. Don't let me just confine you to one through eight, but one through eight and pick and choose which ones you want to make part of this emergency ordinance. If you want to toss out section two altogether, that is perfectly your right. I will tell you, however, uh, that if anybody's going to exercise a unilateral power to close a business, uh, and the way Milton usually uses me is you do rely on my legal guidance. I'm going to have to take some time to get there. And so, and, but no one has suggested that. I've seen it done in the Metro. Um, but but uh, no one in Milton seems to be pining to do any of that. It's actually occurring right now in most of our neighboring, neighboring jurisdictions. They have right. uh, so, now closed a lot of businesses. Yeah, I, and I think this is, um, this is important. If we're removing anything out of here, and if it's going to jeopardize the health or the safety of our citizens, we need to really reconsider that. This is an emergency. This is only for 30 days. The mayor is not a dictator under this. There's checks and balances in place, and I'm okay with removing something as long as it doesn't jeopardize the health, safety, or welfare of our citizens. Councilmember Jamison, I don't believe that removing, for instance, two, two, I don't believe that would have any adverse effect on the public health, safety, or welfare. Um, and, and candidly, you know, for instance, Mr. Mayor, just to you, if there were some of those that you would be uncomfortable exercising unilaterally and would in fact want the full council to assemble, then I could support that. And I would work with your city manager to put together city council meetings on a dime as quickly as sure. we could. And we're working on the technology so you can actually, um, attend these meetings from home or wherever. Um, we're just not there right now and this is this is just changing so rapidly that we want to take advantage needs of it needs to be brought up if y'all get a phone call saturday night at but, 11 o'clock mm -hmm. and something needs to be done you know for the safety and the welfare of our citizens it can be done and we can always overrule that but some sometimes decisions need to be made in this type of situation mm -hmm. And Mayor Lockwood has been elected for, I don't know how many terms, and has to trust in the faith of us and the citizens, and we need to start getting down to business. These powers are essential in an earthquake. Municipalities that have had earthquakes, this is the norm. And, you know, again, we, this is something we hope we don't have to make any of these decisions. Um, and I think, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, pay this point. You know, if it's the public, you know, I'll agree, the second one, that's probably, that could wait. Um, you know, I certainly don't want to close down a business or a building, but to Peyton's point, if, on, you know, 11 p.m. on Saturday night or Friday night, there's something that uh, is, you know, the harm of the public or whatever, and a quick decision needs to be made, that could possibly be, you know, the health and welfare. But, uh, again, hoping we, we don't have to make those decisions, but we may get uh, something come down on us tomorrow or this weekend that have to make a quick decision. You could. You could have a business decide that they're going to have a big spring break party bring in hundreds of kids from all over the metropolitan area, you might want to consider having that authority. Or, or I mean, the reality is there may be something in our city that becomes s such a center for this virus, we don't know. Yeah. And so as things unfold and the, ra you know, the rapid pace of this information, once again, I am comfortable with this emergency measure under these circumstances. Um, so it sounds like, I mean, I would support... Um, this proclamation with the exclusion of um, in section two, number two, um, if that's acceptable to the rest of council, because I can't think of a, an, a scenario where two, two is going to be done without the mayor asking. Certainly not have time, 30 days. I mean, we're, we're trying to get positioned for this weekend. 
Right. And Mr. Mayor, members of the council, I also heard on three, um, you know, again, that's the way it's drafted in the code, but if the, if, if the city was inclined to adopt this as an emergency ordinance, striking section 2-2, two, two, and adding the word city before property in three, that's a, that's that's a very modest, compl- if, reasonable yeah, tweak yeah, right. that if would, if that gives that, citizens comfort. Um, yeah, again, so, so it's, there's no question on that. And also, can you insert something about the transparency, what our MO would be if the mayor... Yeah. If, if someone makes a motion, I will do my best to articulate on the tail end of that motion what the okay. transparency yeah, will that be. That would go out immediately. And you need to make the motion. Knock yourself you, out, No, Carol. You're, you're a high-aptitude fella. You, you <laughs> All right. Is there any other questions or somebody want to add? Uh, it looks like we may have some. Somebody wants to make motion. I'll certainly open it up if there's not any more comments. or. Okay. I'll open up for a motion. Go ahead. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion to move forward the emergency proclamation um, under our new business uh, with the exception of Section 2.2 and the addition of, uh, in the sentence of 2.3, city before the word property. And would we want to add the transparency, transparency. to where oh, it would be compute this right? Any power publicly. exercised, any power exercised under this ordinance by the mayor will be immediately communicated to the city council, the city manager, the city attorney, and using some mechanism communicated okay. to the people. To the public, right. so that Good. They have access. Okay. Okay. And any and any power exercised by the mayor will be so communicated to city council. The, the city council, the city manager, the city uh, legal department, and the citizens. Okay. Do I have a second? Second. All right. I have a motion as read by Councilmember Bentley for approval with uh, stipulations as read, uh, with a second from uh, Councilmember Longoria. Any discussion? Paul, are you clear on all that? I am. Thank you, Joe. Okay. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. That's unanimous. Um, again, I want to do. I, I want to thank the public for not only mm-hmm. communicating with us, but also, especially you guys that are here here tonight. I know that's tough, and it's Friday evening, um, and hopefully we won't have to use any of these uh, uh, unless it's uh, it's in the best interest of all and uh, we'll do our best to keep everybody safe and get through this it's a weird time right now um so uh, do i have a uh motion to uh that concludes the meeting so i need a motion that we adjourn so moved. second i have a motion and a second all in favor please say aye aye, aye. let you know aye. all right thank you